Hey friends, welcome back to our channel. Today is another Q&A video. First of all, I'd like to thank you for watching and uh, commenting on our video, either sharing your personal experience or asking questions. We really enjoy reading those comments. However, there are some comments that are um, would be a little bit lengthy for me to reply in the typing form. Or there are some questions that I think many tea lovers would resonate with. So I'm collecting those comments and uh, replying to them in this kind of a video form. If this is your first time tuning in, hey there, my name is Jen. We run an online tea boutique, Jen Tea specializing in fine tasting great Chinese tea. On this channel, we share all kinds of information about tea from brewing, uh, tea farm, production, or even chemicals about tea. If you are also a tea lover, please consider subscribing to our channel. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like today's video. Without further ado, let's get started. keep the water temperature between infusions? This is such a great question. And I wondered the same when I first started with tea brewing myself. The solution is actually quite simple. Just fill the kettle with water to the proper amount that allows you to use it up at a reasonable pace. This is a great way to manage the water temperature, especially for people like you and me who probably don't like to have our water boiled for a long time or uh, bring to a boil over and over again. There are a few factors that could affect this proper amount and uh, reasonable pace. Personally, I like to finish my water in about three to four infusions. So if I feel my kettle really full, I will be sure to have the water temperature really cool by the end. Room temperature, kettle material, and uh, brewing vessel size, like the teapot size or gaiwan size you choose, will also affect uh, how much water you want to put in the kettle. Most of the time what we find in North American supermarket, the kettles are quite big. But traditional gongfu style kettle, like the Chaoshan gongfu cha, uh, old times the kettle is uh, quite cute and uh, small. So you really have to enjoy that infusion by infusion. One of the reason is to maintain that high water temperature. And uh, that's kind of the element of gongfu tea that spend time and a little bit lengthy and slowing down, enjoying that zen and calming moment. This comment really resonates with me. How do you count the brewing time? Well, I actually don't know. I don't know how people count. That was my question too. Before I was here in North America, I've never heard people brewing tea measuring brewing time by seconds or uh, minutes. So it was new for me. I, till today, I still don't know how other people measure it, but I can tell you how I do it because I don't know. So I use the starting time when I start pouring the water from the kettle to the gaiwan till I finish pour, pouring and uh, take the middle number and similar to when I pour the water out of the gaiwan. I look at the starting time, and when I finish pouring, I select the middle number, that's my brewing time. Uh, I don't have a strong supporting reason why I do this. I guess fundamentally, I don't really care that much. Uh, I don't feel like when I brew tea 25 seconds and 27 seconds, it's a huge difference because in the end, the tea I'm brewing here and the tea you have at home, even though they're all Dragon Well or Taekwai, they're not the same tea. The Gaiwan we choose are not the same, even though they might be all at uh, 120 ml, but they could be different uh, materials and their heat retention is different, maybe different shape, etc. 
So personally, I'm not obsessed with the accurate of the brewing time seconds and the brewing temperature Celsius Fahrenheit. And if you've known us for a while, you know we always suggest you not to follow our instruction. Just use that as a rough guide and, and adjust it according to your preference. We really propose people, if you are interested in, in advanced your tea brewing skills, to practice intuitive brewing. Not to brew tea blindly, but really focus on the tea in front of you and fine tuning every parameters accordingly. And you know, we all make a mistake, it's totally fine, and taste it, smell it, observe it, make adjustments accordingly, and that's how you can really fast and learn. But you might ask, since you don't even like this kind of a brewing instruction, why do you make that kind of video? I do understand the need for beginners to have some parameters to start with. Just like how I first started, to have somebody give you a rough guide would be really handy and uh, kind of um, assuring. And if you follow that kind of uh, uh, temperature and uh, brewing time, in the end, I know at least you won't have a yan cha, a rock tea or oolong brewing like a green tea. So you will land in the in the rough zone of how this tea should taste like. I think it's actually very helpful and uh, important for people to get started. So yes, I will still be making those videos, but as always, never stick to my measurement. Thank you so much for joining me today and um, don't forget to give this video a like, thumbs up and subscribe, all that jazz. Looking forward to see you again. Keep steeping.